oscillate from 0 to 20 because 20 seems like to be the top speed on these scooters really 20 22 even on the downhill down slope we're only getting about 24 miles per hour so to average it out it's pretty much just 20. How's it going you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're back again with another scooter unboxing. This time we're going to be looking at the Uber Scoot. This is the 1000 watt. So let's unbox this up and see what we got. Just on a quick note, this box is pretty well damaged as you can see from this video right here. Alright so now we're just pulling up to FedEx to pick up the package. They were about to return it so hopefully we can make it in time. Let's go see what's up. I had to go and pick it up from FedEx because it was actually being returned back to shipper as you guys can see right here because FedEx deemed it to be damaged which I'm not mad at them so you're finishing out the job so you guys want to check this thing out or yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why, yeah I'm, we're gonna take it crack coils all side, hopefully all the parts is in there. Oh, that great Jeep right there. Oh, right there. Right there. That livery? You see it? Yeah, that. Oh, okay, you yeah. guys are right there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You can pull it up right here, right now, by the gate. It's almost like, shit, it might be easier if you guys come in here and meet me here when you slow down to there. That's the easier way. Is there any way for us to come in here? Yeah, I guess I was thinking, that'd probably be easier because the packaging is all you see. That's about to fall apart, you know? Oh, be careful. Um, As you guys can see, it's a pretty damaged box. But I did get it from Big Toys USA, which are the main suppliers in America for Uber Scoots. They do have a reseller at eBay. If, for example, if someone purchased a 1000 watt scooter for 600 bucks, they use it for about a month, they still have time to, to return it you actually get 90 days to return a purchase so this was one of those scooters that was returned and of course Big Toys USA they cannot resell it as new so they repost it on eBay for used for about half the price now this was listed for about 375 eBay had a discount promo for about 15 percent plus I had an additional $80 off with the shipping and everything it ran me about $220 which is a great deal that's the reason why I went ahead and picked up this scooter pretty much the only main reason because I do have these two 1600 watts this one it's not so good this is the best one as you guys know that's my baby just on a quick mention now Big Toys USA they do have a nice warranty policy even for their used scooters they contacted me even in their description they they firmly mentioned this if anything happens to the scooter while it's shipped to you of any damaged parts anything that's messed up they'll ship you a new one hassle free no charge which is pretty cool it's enough with the talking let's get to the unboxing so here's the scooter we just unboxed it haven't touched it yet this is what it looks like the same as you would get if you purchased it from Big Toys USA. The chain, 
and the gear is still clean and it does come with the same gear ratio right here as the Uber Scoot 1600 which is the 57T this is really the best chain tensioner when it comes to scooters this is the best because the majority of other scooters even when you adjust them the chain does tend to break loose on you on this scooter it doesn't so that's a big plus on this these tires are smaller than the 1600 watt these 1600 watt they come with 12 inch this is a 10 inch tire as you can see you see more tire than rim where you come over here to the 16 watts you have more rim and more tire more room let's see what all comes in here here's the headlight here we have the charger this is a 36 volt charger and of course this is why it's cheap because of the seat as you can see the seat is pretty beat up pretty scratched up but that doesn't matter because we're going to replace this anyway into a spring seat, seat comfortable seat something similar to this actually the same one as this so we don't care about that so far so good the scooter is looking nice the motor is still looking fresh everything seems clean so it doesn't seem like it's really used all right so let's get this scooter out the box here this mess up that boy is heavy We're gonna set up the scooter. Pretty much everything is simple. I would mention that this scooter used one did not come with a tool set, toolbox, which comes with a couple of wrenches and hex keys for you to install these pieces. But I do have one for my previous scooter. So of course, first thing we're gonna do, this lash right here, push it down, lift up on the scooter, make sure this is clear. The steering wheel, we need to install this, make sure it's not tagged up anywhere. So you push down, lift up, and just apply some weight to it, and it'll snap right in place. Kick open the kickstand, and now we'll just install the steering wheel. So here's a tool set from my scooter, my mad scooter. All of them are the same. They have these little hex keys. We're going to use that to tighten this up. Before we tighten this up, you want to align it correctly. To align it, you pretty much just need to straighten up the scooter get your hand right on here under here and just pretty much eyeball it get it as straight as possible so first we're going to loosen it up a little bit more and push this down it has to go down some more so we're going to loosen this up as much as possible all right so when you install this right here you want the key ignition to have a little bit of space a little bit of room from the handle that you installed you don't want it to be completely flat with the ignition there's a little gap right under the ignition that you need to line that up with the handle once you do it like that that's when you eyeball it make sure that it's straight if you need to keep the wheel straight just apply your foot to the tire to keep it straight from turning and just turn this you pretty much just want to eyeball it get this middle part as straight with the wheel as possible I like to use the sides of the tire those two to align the, the steering wheel as even as possible use this for alignment you know you pretty much just have to get it as straight as possible the straighter the better of course but if you're a little bit off it's not gonna really affect you but it's just like a car you want it to be as straight as possible as aligned as possible for that smooth better ride all right so now that we have it straight we're just gonna tighten these two bolts up to tighten them up what you want to do is you want to turn each one a little bit by little bit. That way it doesn't cause the steering wheel to be off balance when you tighten it completely. So you want to tighten the bottom a little bit and the top a little bit and then keep doing it back to back until you can get them as tight as possible. Up down really tight you want to get this really tight that way if you hit a bump or something you don't lose control. You don't want to do that. All right. We're gonna tighten them up really nice. Apply some weight to it. So that's pretty nice and tight. Now normally when you buy it brand new, the seat will not be attached to the pole right here. You will need to install that yourself. It's pretty simple. All you need is a 13 millimeter. You can use a ratchet or a 13 millimeter socket. Just go right here, 
and you pretty much just tighten it. There's each bolt right here on the left side and on the right side. You know, you just tighten them. Right now I'm loosening it up just to show you guys that it's pretty simple. This is how normally it'll come, just like this. All right, so now we tighten it back up. The, the, the container where the battery goes is pretty small. So I was thinking to upgrade this with the, the 48 volts, but I don't think that's gonna be possible now just because of this container is really small and we can't fit that battery that we have. Now this is the 48 volts. As you guys can see, it doesn't fit. The container is too small. So for a future video, we're gonna have a, a lithium battery in here and making it into a 48 volt. So stay tuned to that video. Now let's get back to this. Here's the battery. As you guys can see, these are 12 volts. 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt equals 36 volts at 12 amps. Now, of course, it comes with this with the fuses. These are 40 amp fuse, I believe. Yes, these are 40 amp fuse, same as the 1600 watts. get two of them just make sure the other one is in and snug there we go so let's plug in the battery it's really light compared to the 1600 watt which is a good thing you know and it's smaller so I guess if you're looking for something that's more compact this will be a better choice so when you plug it up of course you're gonna get that spark Well, the spark didn't come. So the keys were, were here in the charger. Normally when you buy this scooter brand new, it will be intact right here. But for my case, this was a used one. It was in the box. So we connected the battery and the battery didn't make a spark, which is surprising. So now we're gonna turn on the scooter, make sure that it works. See if the light right here comes on. So we'll just turn on the scooter. Everything's good. Now this scooter does not come with a horn or a light control like your 1600 watt does this buttons right here it's missing those buttons but it does come with the turbo button so you can be able to press it and get full speed or press it and limit it to half half of the speed now I would say it's a bit quieter it sounds a little bit quieter than a 48 volt of course it's less power so you have your shocks right here it is double suspension two socks this is a 2,000 pound suspension. It's capable of holding to 2,000 pounds and you have two of them so you can get pretty nice comfort ride on there. And of course you do have your front shock right here. This front shock is a little bit different than those back ones, but it does work really well. Now of course you do have your brake in right here, your left brake, your right brake. And this scooter is a disc brake. As you guys can see right here, it does come with a disc brake front also has it which is really nice to give you that perfect stop this uber school does come with a brake light in the back so when you press the brake it does have the brake light on which is pretty cool to indicate someone behind you let them know you're braking and like I mentioned before it does come with these these are the best you'll never have to worry about your chain popping off alright guys so I tried to install this headlight right here I am missing a bolt everything was going so far until we hit the light and there's no bolt so I will be contacting them they'll ship me a new bolt really doesn't really matter I'm gonna install some flashlights like this right here so but if you do want to know how to install this headlight as you guys can see right here this is the same installation there's a little bolt that goes right here alright guys so there you have it that's the installation of the scooter so now we're gonna go for a test ride and see how this bad boy does All right, so the first test, battery's fully charged. We're going up a hill right now. This is the same hill that we tried on the 1600 watt. And we'll see how fast it goes. So I'm at full throttle. Button is pushed in for turbo. Or pushed out. And we're hitting 11 miles per hour. 12 miles per hour. We're going 12. Here's the 1600 watt going up the same hill. 
full throttle. As you can see, he's surpassing us. Easy. Of course, that one has the lithium battery. But just to give you an idea of the difference of the speed. Now, we will be making a future video comparison between the 1000 and 16000 watts. I will be replacing the 16000 watts with his original battery. That way we can get a fair comparison. But for now, let's just take a look at this. So it's at 11 miles per hour this whole time. All right, we have 12 miles per hour, nine miles per hour, 11. Hopefully you guys can see it in the camera. It's not too sunny. All right, so now it's getting a little bit hilly, but we're hitting nine miles per hour, where the Uber School 1600 watt is going really nice up the hill. All right, so now we're just trying to catch up to him. So now we're gonna be on a flat ground. Let's see how fast it goes on flat surface. So, it's picking up the speed. We're at 21 miles per hour. 22. It's at 22 miles. 20 miles. And it's maintaining the speed between 20 and 22. It seems like 22 is the top speed. Now we're gonna see how, how this is a really high hill. We're going 15 miles, 14 miles. This is really high hill. This is a really high hill. So they maintain in between 15 and 16. So the good thing is it does go uphill. So even though it goes slow. Now we're going down the hill. And let's see how fast it can go down the hill. We're at 24 miles per hour. 25 miles per hour and this is the fastest here comes the 1600 watt and 24 miles and he's passing us easy we're maintaining the speed at 24 miles all right so now we're going to cut through this construction and see how well it handles through the bumps so now we're at rocky slippery road of course it's best to go slow on this these are dangerous terrains all right so i made it through it good to go all right guys so here's another slopey hill we're gonna try going up of it ready actually we're gonna go ahead and, and try to race up there this yeah. is 1600 watt let's go on three one two let me get a head start three so i'm pulling full throttle he's pulling full throttle and this is a really high hill let's see if it's gonna get us up there at least so it's maintaining between 11 and 12 13 12 and 13 he made it up there easily without a problem. So now it's gonna pick up speed. 17, 19, 21, 22. Alright. As 
you guys can see, it does pretty well in the hills, it gets you through. So now let's see how it does on a flat surface. So we're just starting off from, from zero. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so this is gonna be a test from zero to up. See how fast it goes, what's the RPM? How fast it goes from zero to 60? <laughs> How fast it goes from 0 to 60? <laughs> Do a test right now. From 0 to 15, all right. So we're gonna go full throttle and see how fast it goes. This is a flat ground, so let's see. One, two, three, let's go. calculate from 0 to 20 because 20 seems like to be the top speed on these scooters really 20 22 even on the downhill down slope we're only getting about 24 miles per hour so to average it out it's pretty much just 20 all right so this part of the test we're gonna be taking it through traffic and see how well it maintains through cars all right so it's a green light let's go of course, I'm going to be going full throttle, as fast as this thing can go, to try to pass the cars. There you go, whenever there's a car stop, that's when we get the pass. documenting this whole ride that way you can get an idea of how long the battery lasted and what where I went with it and what I did so you can get an idea so it's getting slopey down the hill and straight all together in this road so you can get an idea of what the average speed on it the uber school Jesus right here trying to maintain with me yeah so the uber school he's right here ma maintaining trying to stay behind me because he don't want to pass me so easily so he's As you can see if you have an over school 1600 watt all of this will be easy for you but of course we're gonna try to upgrade this 1600 we're gonna of course we're gonna try to upgrade this 1000 watt and try to get it to 48 volts and the more current is gonna get the faster it'll get the faster it'll go But of course, if you're out there and you're not really looking for speed, you just want something that you can cruise around your neighborhood, you know, for point A, point B. If you're going in a short distance, of course you want to go with the 1000 watt. But if you're into scooters and you want the best that you can get for a decent price, you would want to go with the 1600 watts. This one will be much better for you guys. Now we're going down the hill. It is 24 miles per hour. You know, compared to the 1600 watt, this lacks a lot of torque. You know, just to get to the top speed, it feels like it's extremely slow. All right, so 
now we're going on a straight pad, then it's going up, and then it should be flat again. Let's see how well it does on this road. faster than me bro no <laughs> so now I'm trying to lock in the over school 1600 watt keeping them from passing me because it's just ridiculous <laughs> no <laughs> so I'm holding full throttle this whole time you guys We're gonna try to get some leverage. He stopped it, he's coming now. He, now he, he's making a mockery out of it. No! <laughs> so now it's kind of uphill -y. A little bit up. So that's why you see 19. Whenever you see 17, 18, 19, it's almost like a little hill. If you get it between 20 and 22, you're in a flat surface. If you get it to 24 miles per hour, you're in a downhill. Pretty much, that's the top speed, 24 miles per hour. You really can't go any faster than that. Yeah, this one. Full power. We're gonna test the brake. See that? There you go. All right, that's it. That's it. That's it. Here, get this one. Let me get that one. Come on. This one has too much power. The battery is dying though. It's not full power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't kick in until you gotta hold it.
Thank you.